Hey guys, it's Michelle. Welcome to Heartbeat today we're with Mike Mehring and he is the founder of Highway Jam. He's an awesome guitarist, vocalist as well. It's going to be a really fun interview. I hope you enjoy. Right. The name was actually inspired by songs like I'm Guessing, Freeway Jam and Correct. Highways by Jeff Beck. Okay. Is Correct. it because uh, his music spans multiple genres? I think since since I've the age of about 17, I started listening to Jeff Beck yeah. and uh, he just totally blew me away. Like as I think he blows everybody away. When, when the Highway Jams first started, we played one of the songs of uh, the Freeway Jam. Mm -hmm. We adapted it to how we kind of play. Yeah. At that stage, we were a garage rock band. Type yeah, thing. yeah. And we were hunting around for names, and I thought, well, let's call the band Highway Jam after the song Freeway Jam. Okay, cool. And then kind of thing. That's how it's. Sort of <laughs> right. So now, when you play various genres, uh, you obviously open yourself up to various new audiences. So is that what you found as you moved from garage grunge to blues rock to jazz fusion? <clears throat> we started with the garage stuff. Yeah. Uh, garage, just, like, rock. To the wall as yeah. hard as possible. Yeah. That was in the Roxy's days, and um, even then we were touching on um, instrumental rock uh, fusion in those mm -hmm. days as well. And on our first album, uh, To Be Played Loud, yeah. uh, there was um, a song called Fast Cruising, which is like extremely to the wall <laughs> fusion. Okay. Like yeah. Fast as furious. <laughs> And that was kind of, yeah, it was a, we were sort of going towards that jazz fusion stuff right from those early days. Okay, cool man, right. And jazz fusion, right, is a complex, well has complex arrangements which involve, for example, odd time signatures, elaborate chord progressions and counter melodies. And it requires quite a bit of technical proficiency. Do you enjoy that kind of challenge? Do you like playing with those kinds of... Well, um, on the, the Grassland CD, for instance, we yeah. started throwing around uh, different time signatures. Mm. You know, we'd, we'd play, uh, we'd play a, a 7 uh, over an 8 and then a 6 over an 8 and mix the two together. Okay, cool, and, yeah. yeah d just, just like uh, it was a little exercise on, um, uh, on mathematics for us. <laughs> and yeah. and uh, we, we came up with a song called 7th uh, uh, Street, which is written after 7th Street in Melbourne. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, we were playing around with stuff there and also harmonies, yeah. uh, different, different types of phrasings. And um, with the Highway Jam, this kind of uh, outlook, uh, we didn't want to make things too tight. We wanted to give freedom of expression. Mm, and, a bit of improv, uh, maybe? Yeah, a to mm. total improv. Yeah. And uh, there was a couple of good songs that came out of that. Do you feel that it's important uh, to create emerging sounds and to be inspired by your environment? For example, okay, if we look back at history, Mississippi Blues right, yeah. gave birth to Chicago Blues when all those musicians from the South moved up North and then like uh, Muddy Waters, you know, created the Chicago Delta sound. And then because of that, his music reached white audiences. Okay, so obviously things aren't as intense now, but do you feel that it's important to put yourself out there, try new things? Well, look, you know, that, that whole Delta Blues stuff came from, a, a, I think, more of a spiritual angle mm. um, and sort of a, um, a suppressed angle as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, uh, the guys started doing songs and they, they, weren't, they weren't written with any kind of format uh, and it, there was no real words written down. Mm -hmm. Those words would come up as, with a group of people and they were basically speaking about hardships that they'd gone through. And it was basically the early, earliest form of rapping, I would suppose. Oh, yeah. Okay, that, 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 uh, that started because, um, you know, you, you would have a guy just uh, singing about something that, something that was so close to his heart and he would make up words. And with that, with the blues kind of vibe that was going on, it wasn't even, I mean, in those days, it wasn't really even a 12 bar that was going on. I mean, they were playing, they were playing with one chord and, and, and improvise on that one chord wherever their soul took them. And I suppose nothing's changed. <laughs> yeah, people, you know, still connect. Well, if they're feeling the music, they would just go into that kind of zone, you know? So, for example, okay, I feel that songwriting is very cathartic, or can be, okay, cathartic process. 
And uh, the one song I wanted to mention was uh, Booker White's song, uh, The Parchment Farm Blues. Right. And this is a song he wrote about being in a prison farm, which was apparently worse than slavery. But even though it was a pretty depressing kind of story, he still ended it with the phrase, I hope someday I will overcome. So have you ever had a rough experience that inspired you musically? Uh, yes, I okay. um, I think by the time you get to my age, you've had quite a few of those. Yeah. And uh, um, rough experiences. Look, I've, uh, I've written songs um, about about uh, to my children, mm. uh, lessons that my father had given me, whether they were good or bad. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, and there was a song called Fire and Rain. It's fire and rain. There's always rain to put out fire. Mm -hmm. And always fire to 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 creates life really yeah uh, and they both create life yeah so and that was a song I wrote for my children uh, about lessons I had learned from growing up mm -hmm. and also from my father okay. uh, whether they be good or bad um, but those are lessons that I wanted to pass on to my children dream for life dream for soul mm. make your dreams real before you get old that's part of the song oh that's nice yeah. I like that and it's got a, something about uh, I think the last verse is be uh, before I die, I hope uh, that I'm able to learn the tongue of the youth hmm. so that they may listen. Oh, I like that. Yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> learn how to communicate with them so that you know you can we'll pass on the knowledge. We, we just don't know how to speak to children. Mm. Yeah, we don't know how to speak in their language. So that was basically what that song's about. Oh, I like that. That's yeah. very cool, man. Do you feel that it's important to leave a listener with that live life to the fullest ethos, right? Regardless of the genre you're playing or the subject matter of the song, to at least leave them with a like, yeah, you know, life's good. That's what music's supposed to do. Yeah, it's not supposed um, to depress people. <laughs> it's not supposed to depress people. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, supposed to, it's supposed to create some kind of emotion. Uh, yeah. There's healing in music, there is uh, there's anger in music. I mean, mm. music, sometimes Music can give people like an, an angry attitude. Yeah. It can make people violent. It can make people sad. Uh, music is a very powerful thing, mm. and it depends what you want to want to portray and want to what message you want to put across. Um, my my the stuff that I do, I, I think it's mostly it's mostly positive. Yeah. Uh, we did a song off the Grassland CD, uh, which was wild. Um, <laughs> It's completely crazy. We wrote a song about a storm. Okay. The storm that hit Arniston a few years back and totally <laughs> wrecked the town. Yeah. Okay, so you so know, the music's there, kind of kind of you know, mirror that, you know. Yeah. There's there's things going on there, but also at the end of that song, it was it, you, you could actually feel this, the calm and the peacefulness of this mm. and its rebirth. Yeah, like you say, you know, sometimes a hectic thing has to happen for fresh new beginnings to emerge. Absolutely. Emotion, you know? Cool man. All right, so Highway Jam's ethos is music for music's sake, right? Does it mean that at one point you guys kind of feel boxed in? And, you know, ah, it's time to break the rules, time for change. Yeah. <laughs> I've never let boxes worry me up. Like never been in a box person. Not, not, <laughs> always <yeah>. been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Good, if, yeah. If, if there's a box, you know, uh, I always jump out of it. Good, yeah, I like As it. high as possible. As far as music is concerned, it's so beautiful. It is so spiritual. I'm so passionate about it. Mm. I cannot imagine writing a song that's in a box. <laughs> yeah. it, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's why my stuff is not mainstream. Mm. Uh, and thank God um, mm. that uh, you know I, I don't want to write songs for you know people to remember uh, you know for for a month and then they turf it because something is yeah. new. You know I want to write songs that can be you know it. it can basically sit through the ages. Mm. If I'm able to do that, it means I've at least succeeded in something. Mm. And not just writing a song that's popular for now and then you'll never hear it again. Yeah. Yeah. So that's basically, music's more important to me than writing, you know, um, to stuff. With, yeah, yeah, yeah. Public opinion, yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay, so was composing The Road Less Traveled a really freeing experience creatively? I mean, you guys just went for it, right? You know, the, that song, Road Less Travelled, uh, I've got, my hair standing up funny enough. Uh, I just, um, my wife bought me a new guitar. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful little acoustic Martin. And um, I needed to mess around with this guitar and 
play and get, you know, you basically got to bond with it with an instrument. You mm. can't pick up a guitar and go, oh, okay, this thing was going to, you know, work. It's it's a it's a bonding experience. Like the strat over here, it took me nearly a year to figure out how to, you know, to to get tone yeah. out of it, you know. Wow. And I, I I played that. I went into the forest over here and I played, and I came up with little melodies. And I thought, okay, that might work, and um, stuck the mic on, you know, and. <laughs> Put it down and then put some bass on it and yeah, a little bit of And the magic this. happened. Oh, and it works, you know. So <laughs> look it, it's 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 a tranquil song. It's um it's supposed to, it's it's in a minor key, it's supposed to have some kind of a movement. It's supposed to move your soul. Mm -hmm. um, and it's supposed to uh, be a peaceful song. It's the last song on the on the CD of our, our new CD, The Roadless Trouble. The song before that is Fire and Rain. Oh, okay, wow. And the ending of fire and rain is just like a steam train coming out of like you know, <laughs> through a tunnel and it belts to a complete ending and leaves you sitting up there and this thing comes in and it's right just, down and just gives you a bit of peace just to end the CD off. Oh nice, I like that. That's really cool man. Hey guys, that's part one. Stay tuned for part two where Mike will be talking about the Highway Jam lineup. Fender guitars, Richard Gibson, <laughs> and uh, why music matters to him. Have a great day. Like, subscribe, comment, and I will check you next time.